God's word for our meditation this evening comes from one verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where God's word says, The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man was of heaven. This is God's word. Grace and peace are yours, your sinners made holy in the blood of Christ Jesus, our Lamb. Scripture has this amazing way of making maybe the most profound statements through the shortest, sweetest little phrases. Like what's on the screen right now. Short, sweet, to the point there's two modes of existence. And that's what the entirety of this chapter speaks of. Contained within chapter 15 is this one verse that teaches us about our sin and our Savior. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is is used every single year in our three-year lectionary. Portions of it are read every single year on one very specific Sunday, on Easter. Because 1 Corinthians 15 is the great resurrection chapter of the Bible And it shows the two modes of existence. Paul's whole point with this chapter is to lead believers to have hope that there will be this glorious resurrection for for all those who die in the Lord. The message that he preaches is the message that saves. Contained within this chapter are some of the most profound statements in all of Scripture. Statements like, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture. Another one, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. But maybe the most impactful statement from this chapter is its last ones. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, Then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The great resurrection chapter lets us know of the two modes of existence. And our short little verse that we are looking at on Ash Wednesday encapsulates the entirety of the chapter. But on the one hand, there's the stern reminder and warning that the first man was made of the dust of the earth. And that wonderful gospel promise that the second man is made of heaven. And when, when Paul uses this imagery, what he's doing is... He's gathering all the information that he has from the creation account from Genesis 2, verse 7, where God shows his his loving care and concern as he forms and fashions Adam and Eve differently than the rest of creation. Genesis 2, 7 tells us, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. After God created Adam and Eve, he saw all that he had made, and it was very good. There was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Adam is the first man that Paul speaks of in our verse. And when he goes back to Genesis chapter 2 to to help with this section, we understand that being made of the dust of the earth, it's not this terrible thing. Because God said that it was very good. And so we find that that when we think of Adam and his mode of existence, what we must link it to is the creation account itself. 
And so for all those who follow after Adam in his footsteps, we too are made of the, the same material, the dust of the earth. Yet when we go back to the creation account, it doesn't take long for us to find what happened. And we find later on in Scripture that, that all of creation, including the dust of the earth, groans and yearns for the day in eager anticipation when Christ will come back and destroy it and remake it and perfect it. So we understand that being made of the dust of the earth maybe is not the greatest thing because there must be something missing if a second man had to come. Born into this world, we, we find our model of existence after Adam, who was formed and fashioned by the dust of the ground. And so that means that we also share in the fleeting existence that dust has. That dust that travels around the world looking for a place to, to land and stay, and, and there it is on the ground, and it's lifeless. And so too is the end of human existence for sinful human beings. Because we not only share the same mode of existence that, that Adam had, we also share what he brought into the world. And dust helps us understand that a little bit better. Because dust is annoying. Go into a room that hasn't had a fan on in a while and uh, if you take me to that room and turn the fan on, I'm going to start sneezing, and then I'm going to blame you for it, and you might sneeze with me. A day like today helps us understand dust a little bit better as it's flying around, and you don't want to be outside to have it hit your face, and then it gets into the gears of your car and makes it run less efficiently. Or just get a tiny little piece of dust in your eye, and I can guarantee you, you're not going to want to do anything more than get that little fleck of the earth out of your face. Dust is annoying and bothersome. And it truly does show us the nature of sin's power. Because at first you notice it, it's there, and then eventually you just start living with it because it's not all that bad to have with you, and then it covers everything. Dust is annoying. To prove this point, all you need to do is find a bookshelf. Maybe your bookshelves are a little bit different than mine that I have in my office because yours might be a little bit shorter. And so you might dust it because you see the dust on it and when you move the books, the dust, it dissipates from in front of them. But, but go into my office, go to the top, you can't even see it. Dust is there. And just sits and accumulates because it's not bothering a single person. It's just sitting there doing nothing. Unless you're someone who has asthma. And I turn the fan on and the dust blows around the room. Or you get a little bit of water on that dust and have it possibly turn into mold and all of a sudden you have serious problems. Dust, by its tiny little self, it's, it's nothing all that bothersome. You hardly even notice it. But leave it unchecked. It can cause serious problems respiratory issues that can lead to other serious health problems, and serious health problems lead to death, all because of one tiny little piece of dust. Dust proves our fragility and our mortality and our sin. Which is why on a day like Ash Wednesday, it's good for us to take a moment and look at the, the two modes of existence and see that ours is sinful where we have allowed sin unchecked to just be in our lives. And at yes, first, we, we notice it at first because it, we know it's wrong and we're not supposed to do it, but, but it's not really affecting anyone else. So we'll just leave it in our lives. We'll, we'll let it be there for a little bit, and eventually it grows and it grows until it covers everything in our lives. And our one little verse from 1 Corinthians 15 helps us understand the power of sin. Because there had to be a second man. And so the first man's existence 
without help from the second, would be nothing but eternal condemnation. For that is the power of sin. And it's our sins that we have allowed to just live in our lives that caused Jesus to come down from heaven. And it's our sinful nature that we inherited being born flesh to flesh. Our sins that we've left unchecked, the sins that we don't even care about anymore and we just commit. These are the sins that Jesus took with him to the cross. They are to pay the punishment for each and every sin that we have committed. All the sins that we listed at the beginning of the service, that, that we pondered and we examined our own hearts to see how we have caused the Lord of glory to come down from heaven and pay for our sin that we have committed by our own grievous fault. And he took it to the grave. Jesus took that count of sin that, that stood on our record and, and he laid it in the tomb like dust. There to be sealed up and never plague us again. Because the first man, Adam, was of the dust of the earth. But the second man, Jesus, is of heaven. Not born into this world with the sinful condition that, that we all inherit from our parents. Now, as Jesus teaches us in John chapter 3, flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. And that's Paul's point of comparison in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. That there is one mode of existence that is fleeting and temporary and sinful and ends in eternal condemnation, but there is one mode of existence that is of heaven, of eternity. Born into this world, we were sinners. Flesh to flesh. Of the dust of the earth. But in the cleansing waters of baptism, we have been washed clean. Renewed and restored by the Holy Spirit's working in our hearts. We have been reborn. Spirit gives birth to spirit. So now we can say that our model for existence no longer is that to follow in Adam's footsteps. But to follow, follow the model of existence of Christ. We are those who are of heaven. And the glorious body that, that Christ now enjoys, we too will one day be transformed into that glorious body. That Jesus came down from heaven. And by his resurrection, opened up a new mode of existence for those who were once trapped by the dust of the earth. And we may follow him because spirit gives birth to spirit. Dust is annoying. But on Ash Wednesday, it's good for us to think about dust and its fragility and its fleeting existence here today, gone tomorrow. And so will we. But we also know that's not the end for us. For those who are in Christ, not a temporary fleeting existence, but a holy, eternal one in heaven. And so for this journey through Lent, it is good for us to think of our sin and to follow Jesus to the cross, no longer with our sins covering us and left unchecked, but rather through repentance. Let us throw our sins off and let us follow the one who became sin for us to victory. The new mode of existence so that we may proclaim with Paul, the sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.